Hello, this is a small addendum to my last video because I realized after uploading that I miss or forgot a few other things that I wanted to talk about. Uh, firstly, I did touch on this briefly, but there used to be some awful problems with uh, latency causing inconsistency in um, lifetime and range of flames. People were calling it flamethrower mojo. This has been completely fixed as far as I'm aware. Netcode seems to be a lot more functional now in this regard. And I'd like to thank Sig Sigv for his contributions to having this problem fixed. Now, if you'll remember from the last video, we use the flamethrower debug command to display boxes when we shoot the flamethrower. So for each puff of flame, you'll see two boxes, one red box, one blue box. The blue box you see represents the actual hitbox that deals damage when it collides with an enemy. This is a server-side entity, and it's completely invisible to all players during normal gameplay without using the command. And the red box you see represents the flame visual effect that all players will see. However, this is a client-side effect, so there can be some discrepancy to what each player in the server sees. For example, I'm actually experiencing a bug right now. Usually, they spawn pretty close together, but occasionally the red box will bug out and change the spawn position. This can cause some pretty serious desync between the two boxes, as you'll see here. So what's happening here is the red boxes are bouncing off the container, changing their trajectory, while the blue boxes are not touching it at all. So it goes straight through and hits the pyro. And likewise, if we do it on this side, it appears the flames are hitting him, but actually the blue boxes are bouncing off the container. So this is obviously a bug. It's usually not this extreme, just occasionally they will desync. You can reset it by uh, recording a demo. I've just recorded a demo, so that will uh, refresh the game. I'm not exactly sure what triggers this bug. I just wanted to demonstrate it because I got kind of lucky for it to happen while I was recording. But you'll notice that even without the bug occurring, that the two types of boxes, they still don't line up perfectly. Not only the firing point, depending on where you aim is different, but also the spread of each box seems to be completely unrelated. They even go in opposite directions sometimes. Therefore, even without the bug occurring, you can still experience some slight desync. Maybe just a few boxes breaking off from the rest of the stream. However, keep in mind that flame visuals are still only client side, so the way that you see flames moving might not be how other players see them moving. In fact, I was just testing when that bug occurred earlier if a friend could see the two streams splitting, but on his side, they appeared to be behaving normally, while well, on my side, uh, Pyro was getting burnt by seemingly invisible flames and vice versa. Um, most of the examples I just gave are actually pretty insignificant. You know, they wouldn't really change how you play very drastically, but I just wanted to reiterate that although the visuals have improved since Jungle Inferno, they are still not perfect, so you can't always count on the visuals uh, to be an accurate reflection of what's actually happening in the game. Okay, another thing, you might have noticed when we were playing with the desync earlier that the random spread can cause some particles to stray off from the rest of the stream by colliding with the edge of a surface, uh, effectively creating two streams of flames, albeit less dense. It's easier to do by aiming from a distance because the spread becomes larger the longer that the particles are active. In fact, you could even split into three or more separate streams if you aim in the right place, like so. That would never happen in a real game, and to be honest, it's more effective to just aim at each one individually, but I still think that's interesting. Also, I've had another think about the new damage changes and have come to the conclusion that you could probably use a few more tweaks than I originally thought. I still think they were on the right track, but maybe missed the mark on the implementation. In theory, a damage ramp up would be a good way to encourage uh, accuracy, but in practice, it seems to be just as, if not more effective, to just spray in the general direction of the enemy and hope for the best. I think it boils down to that it's just too easy to miss ticks. The damage ticks are really frequent, and if you miss even one, your ramp up gets reset entirely. Not only that, when it does reset, you get the max damage for the first tick, 
meaning you can still do a lot of damage just by scraping them a few times. Now I want to demonstrate a relevant bug here. When you aim into a corner from up close, instead of sticking to the wall, the hitboxes seem to disappear into the corner for some reason. And when there is an enemy in the corner as you do this, you'll see... Every single tick of damage is the maximum of 13, with no ramp up whatsoever. So what I think is happening here is, because the hitbox disappears, there's no contact with flames for one tick, therefore resetting the ramp up. And then the next tick, the flame is in contact, doing the max damage because it's a fresh flame at point blank. And then the next tick, it's disappeared again, so there's no contact. And I think this is just repeating over and over again, so that the only ticks being counted are the fresh hits. And because it never ramps down to minimum damage on the second tick, it kills them a lot faster than normal, even though less ticks are being counted in total. You can kinda replicate this effect by using the random spread and aiming in a certain way, like so. The only ticks that were counted were max damage. This makes me think it might be a bit too easy to do a lot of damage without being very accurate, considering the fastest way to kill someone is to miss half of your ticks. That, and the ramp up being completely reset for missing even one tick, seems a bit unforgiving, a bit unrealistic. So my solution would be to lower the damage on the first tick, first of all. And also, instead of a complete reset for missing one tick, maybe have it ramp down for the time that there's no contact with flames. So for example, if you were to bring someone up to the max ramp up of 13, and then stop hitting them for a while, Instead of being reset back to the minimum damage of 6, maybe when you hit them again and start building up again, it starts at about 9 or 10. You know, and the details, the damage numbers, I don't know, you know, you'd have to leave that to the playtesters. And also, like I said in the previous video, if they're in contact with a lot of flame particles, I feel like that should do more damage than it does. Definitely not the minimum damage, at least. So maybe you could speed up the ramp up rate for the number of particles in contact or something like that, I don't fucking know. If you would like to hear more about the problems with flamethrower damage, you should check out this video by Big Marcy, and I'll leave a link in the description. This video has been very helpful as far as figuring out how I should be playing Pyro, namely that the most effective way to kill people is to do this. Anyway, thanks for watching as always. Next Pyro talk will be about Air Blast, but it's taking me a while to write the notes, so I decided to make this video instead.